What is going on, all you Pokemon Collect Maniacs out there? It's Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and I am so freaking excited to bring you my top 10 list of cards that are under $10 right now. Now, let me tell you, we do a ton of data, we do a ton of research, we do a ton of due diligence here on this channel because I know you work hard for your money and I work hard for my money, and this list incorporates all of that. Now, what do I mean by that? Listen, we're going to layer in all of our previous learnings and we're going to apply them to these top 10 cards here. That's how they made the freaking list, right? Some of the things we've talked about, top sets by era, right? We always look at how top sets have performed. We look at their price appreciation or depreciation over time, and we look for patterns and commonalities in that. On top of that, then we start looking at the top 20 cards for every single set as well, and we start to correlate between, you know, the top sets and their top 20 cards, and where do we see price appreciations, and where do we see opportunities for growth, and we layer that in in this video as well. Then we also look at the type types of cards, right? We look at full art trainers, we look at specialty sets, we look at all kinds of types of cards, and we've done videos on those in the past, and again, always looking for pattern recognition, always looking for ways where we can play chess when everybody else is playing checkers. And finally, one of my favorite things to look at is grading volume. So again, at the end of the day, if you want to sell these cards at some point, somebody's got to be out there with open arms waiting to buy it. When we see grading volume, when we see certain Pokemon that are graded more than others, that means the hobby values them at a high level, and that means that there is always going to be open arms waiting to scoop them up. So with that being said, listen, I love this channel. The thing I love about this channel is I am shoulder to shoulder with all all of you guys when it comes to this you're gonna hear me talk about a bunch of cards I'm actively buying them myself, right? Like, I am out there. I'm an investor. I'm a collector, just like you are. And I get so much joy from sharing this information with you guys. Listen, I don't own a card shop. I don't sell mystery packs. Nothing against those people who do that, right? But, I mean, that's that's their business. That's what they're in, right? Like, a butcher's not going to tell you to eat a salad, and a vegan's not going to tell you to crush a hamburger. Uh, so just know that I'm right there with you and going through all of this. With all of that being said, if this kind of data, this kind of research, this kind of due diligence into the cards that you are buying makes you excited, if that revs your engine, hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up if you like what you see if you have questions or comments drop them down below and i am excited to share this list so i'm getting into it right now all right everybody we're starting off with two cards from lost origin right why are we talking about cards from lost origin well everybody on this channel just in unison agrees lost origin is going to end up being one of the top sets in the sword and shield era through all of our research we know singles and top sets do really really well both of these cards are in the top 20 again through all of the research and the data that we've done we know top 20 cards in top sets end up performing really really well in the long run Pikachu and Mew are two of the top graded cards, so we know that there's going to be a lot of demand for them. We also know through our research that the gold cards in the Sun and Moon era have been going absolutely bonkers, right? Like, absolutely out of left field. They're crushing it. Could these types of cards be next? Now, you look at them, Lost Origin still a relatively new set, so these are going through the normal price depreciation, which you typically see when a new set comes out. But I think these are flying incredibly under the radar. Now, the biggest problem that I'm having, the biggest dilemma that I have, is do I want to buy these raw for under $10? but the PSA 10s are going for like mid to high 40s. So do you just want to go ahead and buy a PSA 10 and know that you have it in pristine condition for the long run, knowing that, hey, listen, as long as the single prices go up, if they do even half of what the gold cards and Sun and Moon have done, then the PSA 10 prices are going to appreciate like crazy as well. For me, I'm leaning heavily towards just buying a couple PSA 10s of each of these and having them in the old collection because I'm a grader. That's what I like. So uh, that's what I'm thinking about right here. But either way, no matter what way you go, no matter how you approach it, I think both of these cards are absolute epic additions to your personal collection right now. The very next card card. The cool thing about this video and the cool thing about um, another direction that I'm taking the Pika Pika Papa in is I haven't talked a lot about some of the older cards and I actually love old cardboard. Uh, I've been so caught up in the modern just like everybody else. Modern and ultra modern has all the momentum right now. It has all the talk tracks but listen collecting can be cyclical right now modern and ultra modern is super hot but guess what some of these older cards like this beautiful Rayquaza is flying under the radar. Now the market will at some point it'll rotate. It'll rotate and people will start going after the older cards cards as well. So what you want to do is you want to understand when the market is out of rotation, like some of these older cards, that's the time to freaking buy, right? You don't want to buy when everything's super, super hot and through the roof. You want to buy when things are underappreciated and flying under the radar. And I certainly think this is one of those cards. Not only that, I feel like the Rayquaza character as a whole, the Pokemon, 
I feel like he's gaining a ton of momentum. Like he, the cards are going up. I think this is a great opportunity to get it on Rayquaza. I just think it's a really, really popular card. It's always in the top 10 of the most graded Pokemon. It's never been in the top three or four, uh, but I do feel like there's a lot of momentum here. Uh, this card itself is on the rise. Like I know it's at $10 and 19 cents, and this is supposed to be a video of 10 under 10, but when I found it, it was still under $10. Uh, and I, when I pulled the recent graph, it was over it. So it's on here anyways. I'm gonna tell you this. I've already picked up three of these and I am hunting on eBay every single morning to see if I can't pick up more. The other thing I wanted to call out about this card in particular, it's got a crazy low PSA population. Only 97 of these cards have been graded, period. In any condition, only 97 of these have been sent to PSA. Eight of them have come back gem mint 10. 37 have come back a PSA 9 mint. I think this is an incredible opportunity to get in on this card. And again, when the market starts to rotate, I think this card is going to pop the heck off. It's already going up into the right. Might be the last chance to get it right around $10. So super cool card. Love this one. Love that we're going back into the black and white era. I am picking this up actively as we speak. Next one right here. Now, this might surprise a lot of people for Aroma Lady, right? Like, people are going to say, well, it's got two words, and a lot of times full art trainers with two words don't do well, you know. Anyways, here's my thought process behind this one, and this could be a chess move or this could be a flop, but it's from Evolving Skies. We all think Evolving Skies is going to be the top set out of the Sword and Shield era. We all know the top set single cards do really, really well. This card certainly passes the eye test from a full art trainer perspective, right? She's cute. We got the feathers or leaves or whatever blowing around her. She's happy. Like, from an eye perspective, this passes all of those tests. Listen, this this is not in the top 20, which is going to shock you. A lot of these cards, I'm talking about the fact that they're in the top 20 list uh, for any particular set, and that has led to previously a uh, really strong price performance. But this is the highest priced full art trainer in Evolving Skies. Now, Evolving Skies has all kinds of cool artwork and cool cards that are just taken over the top 20. But in almost every set that we look at, a full art trainer ends up somewhere in the top 20. So with that being said, hey, could this be a very sneaky play if this one follows the trend of pretty much every other set and it ends up with a trainer in the top 20 of Evolving Skies? Aroma Lady has the inside track, right? She's already the number one full art trainer. It passes all of the eye tests. I think that Evolving Skies is going to continue to do really well. I think the singles are going to continue to do really, really well. Um, so I think this is an interesting buy and I'm absolutely picking some of these up. I'm going to try and get them in PSA 10s, or if I can get them raw at a decent price, I'll try and send them in as well. But I think this is a really cool opportunity to get in on a card. The set is not flying under the radar. Everybody's talking about Evolving Skies, but this card in that set, I think is absolutely flying under the radar, and I think it could be a really big grower in the future. All right, next one we're looking at right here, Brilliant Stars. Again, keeping the top sets trend going, right? Brilliant Stars. Everybody feels like Brilliant Stars is going to end up being one of the top sets in the Sword and Shield era. I know I am certainly on that bandwagon as well. This is a top 20 card. Charizard, no surprise, Charizard's the number one most graded card and the most popular character in all of the Pokemon TCG space. Now, what I will say too is we've been doing a ton of Charizard research on this channel. I have looked at tons and tons and tons and tons of Charizard cards from all different eras. It is very rare for a card like this. So I'm talking V-Star, V-Max, you know, any kind of non-base set, Charizard to end up at less than $10. And the fact that this one is under eight right now makes me feel really, really good that, hey, listen, it's a top set. This is a top 20 card in a top set. It's a specialty Charizard. Like, I feel like this card is not going to stay at $8 for long. Now, we all know Brilliant Stars booster boxes, they got all the way up to $180. Now, they've come back down to $130. I don't think that's any indication of what the future Brilliant Stars is going to be. I think Brilliant Stars is still going to be a great set for the long run. But I do think that this gives us an awesome opportunity to get in on this card because people are a little bit cold on Brilliant Stars right now. But I guarantee you, once that thing flips to sold out on the Pokemon Center, and I know the whole world doesn't have access to it, but I feel like enough of the collecting population does. Once it flips to sold out on the Pokemon Center... I think those booster boxes are going to go right back up, and I think we're going to see a lot of action in Brilliant Stars. So, cool card, great set. I think this is an absolute steal at under $8 right now. Next one right here, I have talked about this card in the past. A couple months ago, I did a video on Full Art Trainers and you know how bullish I was on them and how well they've been performing. Uh, and this card was in there because it was priced right. Now, specialty sets have typically performed really, really well in the past. Like the list of specialty sets that have gone crazy is through the roof. But Shining Fates didn't follow suit. Why is that? They have printed this thing into the freaking ground. Like you can still find it at Walmart. You can still find it at Target. Like this poor set is waving the white flag. It's saying, Pokemon Company, please leave me alone. <laughs> You've beaten me into submission. Now, what I will say this though, 
This is a top three card in Shining Fates. Top three cards typically outperform the other cards in the top 20, right? Like they're considered chase cards. Top three cards have a really good strong track record of performance. I do think that once Shining Fates ends up out of the wild at some point, who knows, it could be 2030 at this rate. But once Shining Fates disappears out of the wild, I do think that we'll see some price appreciation from the ETB standpoint uh, and also from some of the singles card standpoint. Um, I think if this card, because the artwork is great. We talked about passing the eye test with the Roma Lady. This one certainly passes the eye test as well. Uh, full art trainers have a really strong track record of success. Uh, I do think that if you had this card in this artwork in any other set, um, I think it would be through the roof, right? Like I've got some Skylar cards you're going to see it in the video on Wednesday. I'm cracking it out of a uh, SGC case and I'm sending it into PSA. But anyways, I think this card would do really well in any other set. I think in the current set, in the current price, I still think it's an awesome buy and hold opportunity. Again, I don't think this is one of the cards that's going to pop up, you know, over the next six to 12 months. I don't think you're going to double your money in that time, but I think this is a great buy and hold for the long run. Next card right here, this Espeon GX from Sun and Moon base set. Okay, listen, Sun and Moon base set is certainly not one of the top sets from the Sun and Moon era, right? We all know that. But what I will say is the Sword and Shield base set has been going absolutely nuts from a booster box price perspective. It is number two only to Evolving Skies as in regards to price right now. So in my mind, will the Sun and Moon booster boxes follow suit? Like, will people start saying, hey, Sword and Shield booster boxes are doing so good. Why the heck wouldn't Sun and Moon booster boxes follow suit? And people start piling into it. Now, we're already starting to see this card appreciate in value. Look, it is right under $10 right now. It's at $9 in change. There's also an Umbreon card, which is the exact same way. It's a GX full art, just like this one is. It's already over $12. This card is on an upward to the right trajectory. People might be starting to make that rotation into Sun and Moon base set, realizing that this could be an awesome opportunity. So this could be one of your last chances to get this card at under $10. I think this is a beautiful piece of artwork. I think this is an amazing card. I think this is a great opportunity. And I'm pumped to have this one on the top 10 list. And I am going after it as we speak. All right. Now, two Mewtwo's from Shining Legends. And let me tell you about Shining Legends. Shining Legends has had a very turbulent year. When we talked about specialty sets earlier and how they've done really, really well, Shining Legends is certainly one of them. It started off the year at like $312, I think. And then it got all the way as high as the 325. Now it's come back down to 305. It really had this almost like a perfect up and down trajectory to it. But what I will say is this, I think over the long run, Shining Legends is going to continue to do well. Yes, I know it's had a turbulent year, but guess what? At the end of the day, it's only down a little bit compared to where it started the year at. And I do think that we're going to rotate into some of these older products here relatively soon. Both of these are top 20 cards in Shining Legends. Both of these are top graded Pokemon. And both of these have just epic freaking artworks, right? Like I think these cards are being depressed for all the wrong reasons. I think they're just following suit with the way the Shining Legends ETBs is going. And I think in the long run, these are going to turn and these are going to make the rise. So getting these at under $10, I think is an absolute freaking steal. And especially the one on the left is the one that I'm really excited about because I like that artwork a little bit more. And we all know artwork plays a big part in popularity and price appreciation and just the love of collecting, which we all have. So very next one right here, if I can get it to switch over, which it won't do, so I'm gonna have to go manual, watch out. The very next one right here is the Pikachu EX. It's an XY promo. I think the XY era is flying incredibly under the radar. I talked about it earlier when we looked at that Rayquaza. Like, I feel like everybody's attention is on Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield, which is a great opportunity for us to look at some other eras and some other cards and some other sets that nobody's paying attention to right now. And I certainly think this is one of those cards. I have been shocked to look at the price of this. So it's an awesome era. Listen, I do think we're going to rotate into some of these older cards. This is on the rise over the course of the year. You know, it's been super choppy. You've seen it gone really, really high and come back down, then high and down. But what you see is you see this step pattern, right? And it keeps stepping up into the right. So overall, that is a good sign. If you were to trend line this out, the trend line would be up into the right. Um, from a PSA graded population, whenever I talk about older cards like this, even though XY isn't super old, but it's old enough. Whenever I talk about older cards, I always talk about the PSA population. Only 456 of these have been graded. Now you compare that to a bunch of the modern cards, which are in the overall graded number, 10, 15, 20,000. Like this is absolutely nothing. This is a drop in the ocean. Uh, 126 gems. So pretty good number of gems out there. 174 mints. Uh, but overall, again, compared to modern, super low population. I love this art. This is all about Pikachu. This is him blasting off some lightning. Like this is just, this checks all the boxes for me. Uh, I've got a couple of them coming in the mail. I picked them up this morning. So I think this is an awesome opportunity to get in this card. Again, that stair staff pattern lets me know that a lot of people are into it as well. It will be interesting to see how this performs over time. 
All right, everybody, listen, I had so much fun putting this video together, and as I always do, I did a ton of research, and I've also come up with a whole bunch of cards that are under $5, so if you guys are interested in my top five under five or top seven under five, who cares about the number? If you're interested in the cards under $5 that I think have a great opportunity to grow over time, go ahead and drop it in the comments down below, and I will be happy to shoot that video for you. Listen, if you made it all the way to the end and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content, if you have questions or comments. Comments, drop them down below. I hope you guys have an epic Sunday and I will be talking to you on Wednesday where we're going to be doing a really cool video. We're going to be cracking out some CGC. We're going to crack out some SGC uh, Pokemon cards and we're going to be sending them to PSA to see how they cross over. So you guys have an epic one. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks everybody.